If you have not yet seen the Rode Video Mic Go 2, this is an impressive little microphone that you can use in so many different ways with your phone, with a camera, or on your desktop computer as a USB microphone. So in this video, that's what we're going to demonstrate. We're going to talk about how to use this as a USB microphone using the Rode Connect software to make changes to the audio. It's impressive software, an impressive mic. So let's get into how to use it like this, and we're going to do that right now. So hey, welcome back to the channel. I am Ken with KenTheContentCoach.com and once again in this video we're going to talk about how to use the Rode VideoMic Go 2 as a USB microphone using the Rode Connect software. Thank you so much for stopping by and giving me just a few minutes of your time to see what I have to say about this microphone and how to use it. So let's jump right into this. So the first thing we need to do is download the software. So to download the software, the only thing that you need to do is go over to Rode and I will put this link down in the description. Go to their website and we're looking for the Rode Connect software. So you would download now. Choose your operating system, Windows or Mac OS. Make sure you put in your email address and then download and that will be downloaded to your computer. Go through your normal procedure to download at that point. Now at this point, there is a little bit of setup that's required in the beginning. So the only thing you need to do now is launch the software. And after you launch the software, you're gonna see this box. Welcome to Rode Connect. Before getting started, please connect all audio devices you would like to use with Rode Connect. Once the microphone is connected, which is straight up USB, we'll click get started. Now the first screen you're going to see here is add your microphone. So you can drag your Rode Video Mic Go 2 up. There are four available slots for microphones. After you've done that, click next. Now here we can actually add our system audio and our virtual devices. And I will kind of go through in a few minutes what these are. But basically system audio is going to take everything from your system audio wise and route it through out to your production and virtual will allow you to use virtual devices with this also. So to set this up, you simply need to drag those up into the available virtual channels and then hit next and you're done. You are ready to use Rode Connect. So now that the software is installed, we will go right over to the Rode Connect software and we'll go through some setup here. So when you look at the Rode Connect software, first of all, we'll go over kind of the screen that you see. This is the interface, what the software looks like. So these are the microphones that we have added. So we have microphone one, we have system one and virtual, which is channel two. So these are basically our system channels here. If you have up to, again, four microphones, you can connect up to four Rode microphones. In the description, I'll list what microphones are compatible with this software, but you would see those microphones there if you did have more. Now, also in the software, we do have sound pads. So this basically kind of turns into a mini Rodecaster Pro software version. And the cool thing is this software is free. So if you have one of the Rodecaster Pro, for some of this functionality, then you now have this in a piece of software. And it does work again with all these Rode mics. So for example, here's the sound pads. And these are the same ones that are built into the Rodecaster Pro when you first open the box. So we have some sounds we can use here. Intro, outro music, laughter. All these standard ones. And you can actually edit these by dragging a sound on top of this. So we can click and we can change the colors. We can change the name of it. And we can even change into like a uh, bleep button or a trash talk. All kinds of options here. Again, this is just like the Rodecaster Pro, so no difference there. Okay, so let's take a look at the individual channels and show how we configure these. So first up, we have the microphone. Now, what you see in the software write-up is that you do have a slider that you can use to control the volume, the output of your microphone. So as you slide this around, you will hear my voice change, go up and down. If I drag this all the way down, you'll hear nothing and we'll take it back up. Now what you're looking for volume wise, you want this green bar to be within this range here. This is considered the acceptable range for the microphone. So you wanna make sure that your voice is falling within this range as you're speaking into it. Now down at the bottom, we also have a mute button. So if I mute this, you will stop hearing me right about now. And now that I unmute it, you can hear me. So very simple feature there. The ear is here if you only want to use this channel in your monitor. So as you can see, I am using an in-ear monitor so I can hear this coming through. The cool thing about this microphone is that it does have a built-in monitor so you can just simply plug a headset into it and you can monitor everything going through it. So if I want to only monitor that, I'll click the ear. And now the only sound that's gonna come through is that. So we will uncheck that. So that's the initial setting on the front. Now you can also edit settings for the microphone to make the sound different. So to do that, you just click the one right here and now you have all kinds of settings. The first setting we have here is a level. This is where you can use to actually add gain to the volume, add gain to the microphone, and you'll see the slider here. Again, you wanna make sure that you are in that range in that green bar. 
that is where you want your voice to be. If you're too low, then we're not going to be able to hear very well as you are speaking into the mic. And if you're too high up into the reds, then you're going to be clipping, which is a bad sound. If you know audio, you know clipping. It just It's a very bad distorted sound. You want to make sure that you're not in that range. Going down below, we have three settings right up top. So the first one we have is pad. Now pad is Rhodes built-in feature to reduce the sensitivity of the mic. So if I click this, you're going to hear my volume reduce drastically. So now this with pad selected, you're probably not hearing me too well, but we'll go here together. That's pad. I'm going to turn that back off. The next feature we have is the high pass filter. Now what a high pass filter does when activated, the low frequency sounds, bass or low end of your voice are basically rolled off or taken out of the audio completely. This reduces low frequencies to help reduce noise around you. This setting is great if there's a lot of noise, a background noise around you, or if you're outside using this, there's traffic noise, something like that. So that's what a high pass filter would be. Just to show you the difference in sound, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And you'll notice when I do turn it on, the first setting is 75, that's 75 Hertz. Or we can click it again to go to 150. And you can hear how my voice has changed doing this. Standard, what I like to use when I'm using these microphones outside is 75. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in 75 so you can hear that throughout. Now the next feature we have here is the high frequency boost. This actually enhances clarity by adding an extra six decibels of the frequencies that are typically associated with the human voice. So if I add this, you will hear how it changes. So here I'm gonna speak. Now you can hear as I'm speaking how that changes. I typically don't use this inside. This is something I would use if I was outside a lot. So I'm gonna leave that off, but that is what that setting does. All right, the next setting we have is noise gate. Basically noise gate is going to reduce background sounds around you. So if I uncheck noise gate, so now you can kind of hear if I'm clicking on my chair, clicking on the table. You can hear that background noise a little more. There's also a clock ticking, all that. So if I click noise gate, it's going to reduce that background noise. And now you should hear that noise reduced and then when you do start to speak, it'll pick up your voice and we should sound clear. Next thing we have is compressor. Now basically what compressor does, compressor takes your, your voice, takes the volume of your voice and kind of puts everything into an even keel. So it's gonna take the loud, one. so when I'm speaking, if I start to speak louder like this, it's gonna reduce that output so that it doesn't sound as loud. Or if I'm talking low like this, it's actually going to increase it. It tries to keep all volume at the same level on the output. So that is a compressor. I do use compressor each time. I'm usually filming with my Rodecaster Pro, so I'm using master compressor there. Or if I'm filming some other way, then when I go to my editing software, I will actually use compressor through Final Cut Pro. So compressor is very important to get a good sound. All right, the next features we have here. So this is Rode's built-in Aphex effects. They have something called Exciter and Big Bottom. So basically what the Exciter does, the Exciter actually changes the higher frequencies of my voice, kind of gives me a brighter sound. So if I uncheck this, actually I'll turn them both off for this. So it, you hear my voice now, how it changed from just a minute ago. So the exciter is gonna take the higher frequencies of my voice and add some brightness to it. So if I click that, you will hear kind of how the voice changed. So that is with exciter. Now Big Bottom does exactly the opposite. Big Bottom is gonna take the lows of your voice and actually make those a little more boomy or a little more you know, lower. It's gonna enhance that lowness of your voice. So if I turn this on, now we should hear that low really starting to come through and I hear it in my monitor, so it should come out just like that. I typically like to have both of these on because it's gonna give you kind of a, a richer and fuller sound altogether. It'll kind of give you that V pattern. And so I like to have both of those on. This same thing is built into the Rodecaster Pro and I do use those on my Rodecaster Pro. So that is the microphone settings. I'm gonna go back and just click this one here. So now we're back to levels. And as you can see, my volume is staying pretty consistent on the output of my voice. You can see I'm staying within that range, within that bar, and we're good. Now, if I wanted to reduce this now to reduce everything as a whole, I could slide this up and down, and you can hear how my volume changes. I'm going to go back up because I do typically like to keep my voice in the middle to upper range of that bar, so that's what I'm doing there. Okay, so next up, let's talk about system audio. Now, the system channel, this is going to play any audio from your computer through your Rode Connect software and out to your audio. So... I'm gonna show you this using Epidemic Sound. And so Epidemic Sound I do have set up here, so let's play this song. All right, now you hear we have music. Now again, you can slide this back and forth 
I'm going to drag it down to reduce it a little bit. So if you want some background music, this is also good for things like StreamYard and other software, uh, streaming software. So I'll show you a StreamYard demonstration here at the end. For those of you that want to have background music of your choosing in StreamYard, this is a great option for you. So we do have that background music. We can drag that down. We can take it up. And there you go. So we'll pull that back down. Actually, I'm just going to stop it. Now, it's very important to note here that I am using Epidemic Sound, which is it's copyright royalty free music if you are a subscriber. So if you do want access to that kind of music, then in the description, I'll have a link for a free trial. Go check that out. Epidemic Sound is what I use for all of my music in videos and in live streams. Great service. So that is System Audio. Now, next up, we have Virtual. Now, Virtual will basically allow you to use your Rode Connect software to run through other platforms. So if you're doing like a Zoom call or a Microsoft Teams, you can actually use this to make that work. So to show this, I'm gonna bring over Zoom. All right, so if we look at Zoom and you want this microphone and all this audio to go through Zoom, then what you would do is basically go to your microphone, your audio settings, and you can see what I have selected. I have Rode Connect Virtual and Rode Connect Virtual for the microphone and the speaker. So this is gonna send everything through Zoom and if I test this, so you can see that music going through there, that's on the test. So we'll say yes, we do hear the ringtone. And now if we speak and pause, do you hear a replay? Do you hear the ringtone? And now if we speak and pause, do you hear a replay? So now all this audio is going out through Zoom, so we are good. We can see Zoom is seeing the Rode Connect Virtual as that device. And now you can actually use this in Zoom. So it's a great way to use Again, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, um, OBS, Ecamm, things like that. You can set those up in each respective software. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take you through some of the preferences within Rode Connect within the software. So to see the preferences, we go across the top here. There's a three dot. This is your preferences menu. We'll hit there. Now, the options that you have here, first up, we have Setup Assistant. Setup Assistant will actually take you back through the initial setup when you first loaded the software. So again, this is where you add your microphone, it's where you add your system and virtual devices. So that is what that, so if you ever decide you wanna go back and just reset everything, you can do that. Or if you add microphones, you can go through that to add the microphone to the next. Again, you have four channels total for microphones. Next thing we have is preferences. So let's run through some of the preferences real quick. So first up, you have monitor out. Monitor out, I currently have no output selected, but you can actually have this running through any device. So if you have your Zoom audio device, I've got Epoch Cam, Ecamm, built-in output you can select your monitor out there monitor mix this is where you tell road connect if you want to include your microphone or not if you don't want to hear your microphone coming back through the monitor then you would say excluded me personally i like it included because i want to hear the total mix coming through my inner monitors so i'm going to leave that set recording you have the option of recording also stereo or multi-channel so what this is going to do if you're recording which i'm going to show you here in just a second this is going to tell road connect if it should export your recording in one file which would be stereo or if each channel should have its own separate recording file which would be multi-channel now the reason multi-channel is cool is because now you can take these files that are exported and you can bring those into something like GarageBand or audacity or something like that and you can actually edit each channel separately to get a good mix the way that you want it all right next up we have latency we have low latency and ultra low. So actually when you select these, you're gonna see at the bottom, low increases audio buffer sizes for best performance. And ultra low decreases audio buffer sizes for lowest latency. So latency is just the amount of time it takes for your voice to make it across the microphone through the software out to your source. So that's latency, put that at low. Now for appearance, we have automatic dark or light. This is simply a preference thing for what you want everything to look like. I have everything set to dark mode, so automatic does that for me, but we can set dark specifically, or we can go light. And you can see now that has changed the color of the software to that. I just, I prefer the dark look, so I'm gonna keep that. Scaling, you will see when I select this, this will actually make the software bigger. It'll, it'll basically multiply. So if I hit times two, you're gonna notice the window got a lot bigger. Go back to times one. And then you can select the language of the software these are the available languages. Okay, so now you can also record audio. 
Um, as I said a second ago, so if I wanted to record this as a separate piece of audio outside of what I'm doing right now through Ecamm, then I can actually hit record right here. This is great for like podcast and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit record so you can see what this looks like. So now we're recording. You see it's changed to red. That's how you know that we're recording. When you're ready to stop recording, you just press record again and you're done. Now the recording button will actually show you the recordings that you have. So now you can go and export those. These are different recordings that I've done. So we're gonna click the export button and you can see here, you can choose your platform. So you can do custom settings or you can choose the list of available here. We're gonna go custom first. If we go custom, you can see that you can actually select the different settings that you would like. You can select your audio settings, your bit rate and your output audio levels there. Or we can go select a service and it's got some preset that are best for that actual platform. When you have what you want set there, you can either go and export or you can delete the file. And now you will have a file ready for you to use in any way that you need to. So now if we go look at our files that have been exported, so I've exported two files here, recording one, recording two. If we look at recording one, recording one is an example that was exported using the stereo mix. So again, all channels are combined into one file. Recording two, I did as a multi-channel export and you can see that all the individual channels are exported separately. So now you could pull these files into Audacity, into GarageBand, and you could edit these separately within that software. Okay, so next up, you can actually use Rode Connect as a virtual device to go out to your streaming platform. Now I'm doing this through Ecamm and Ecamm is what I stream through. This can be done with pretty much any streaming platform. So I'm gonna show you first in Ecamm. So if I go to Ecamm Live Demo Mode, you can see here that I have Rode Connect Stream selected. This is how everything is going through from Rode Connect into Ecamm. So if I hit the drop down here, you can see all my different options. These are the ways that you can use it to stream. Because I have Rode Connect Stream selected, now I can stream with this microphone through Ecamm and all the sounds going through that software will come out through the stream. So it's that simple with Ecamm. Now, the real exciting thing for some of you I know is going to be StreamYard. So if I go over to StreamYard, I have a stream set up here just to show you this. Now I have selected for the microphone, Rode Connect Stream Virtual, and for the speaker, Rode Connect Stream Virtual. So you can see the microphone bar is working. So we have audio. And if we test, you can hear that coming through. And we know that's coming through because of the Rode Connect. You can see the system audio. So that's with StreamYard. Now what that means is though, now I can go back and use Epidemic Sound like I was doing before, or I can play audio off of my computer. And now I can have background audio coming through StreamYard playing with me through the stream. So that is a quick walkthrough of using the Rode Connect software with the Rode VideoMic Go. This is an outstanding microphone once again. I love this microphone. I don't usually use it in this setting. I use this more on my M50 or my ZV-10 if I'm out doing some vlogging or filming outside. But for those of you that need a good USB microphone and you want the accessibility of what the software allows you to do through your streams or into your videos, this is an absolutely outstanding option to you to use for that. So I highly recommend this microphone. Now I've also done a video in the past where I've actually gone out and done sound test and came back and showed you guys what this microphone sounds like. So if you wanna check that video out, that video will be right here. Go watch that to hear kind of a real world test on sound. I, I tested this outside, inside with two people, with traffic around, all kinds of different ways. So check out that video next. As always, I appreciate you watching this one. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remember, just hit record. We'll see you for the next video.